I didn't think it was a snooze fest at all. Like I, I, I listened to about, I only listened to about 30 minutes of the conversation. Um, and in those 30 <laughs> minutes, I heard them talk about the border extensively. Yep. And I heard them talk about the economy extensively. And that is why Trump resonates with so many people because he's speaking to the issue. Trump deranged Charlemagne defends Trump. What is going on here, folks? Well, on a recent episode of The Breakfast Club, they discussed the Elon Musk Trump interview and expectedly most of the hosts are making fun of it. They're saying it sucked. It was boring. Nobody watched it, even though it again broke internet history for the most live watched interview ever, right? But nonetheless, Charlemagne here actually says that the Twitter space was good and Trump is running a good campaign based on the right issues folks you may be as confused as me we'll react to it here today so if you enjoy the content be sure to hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you are new and listen as Charlemagne oddly indirectly but kind of directly here makes the case for Donald Trump take a few of those events away and we have a different world at one point in the discussion over 1.3 million people were listening not the 25 to 30 million that trump mentioned on the stream but uh this again this does mark the first time that he's back he's talked about a lot it was it was kind of a bit of a snooze fest for me but you know he definitely uh covered a lot in regards to that uh, meanwhile, on the I meanwhile you know so obviously you're getting the expected cope here from most of the Breakfast Club hosts, right? She says it was a snooze fest. She says only 1.3 million people concurrently watched it live, which is like, yeah, only 1.3 million listening to a live interview on the internet. Are you freaking kidding me? But okay, it's what we expect. What Charlemagne says here, you may not expect. So, so interesting. I didn't think it was a snooze fest at all. Like I, I, I listened to about, I only listened to about 30 minutes of the conversation. Um, and in those 30 <laughs> minutes, I heard them talk about the border extensively. Yep. And I heard them talk about the economy extensively. And that is why Trump resonates with so many people because he's speaking to the issues. And those are- is this real? The two major issues. Folks don't care about all that other stuff as long as what they care about is being addressed. People want to know how they're going to have more money in their pocket mm -hmm. and how they're going to feel safe. Well, that's what his base cares about, right? That's, that's, that's what America, that's what everybody cares about. When, you have, when you're having a conversation, you're talking about light bills being lower mm -hmm. and you're talking about, you know, uh, groceries being lower and jobs. border control. That's yeah. what everybody cares about. That's not just his base. You said he wasn't a snooze fest. You only listened for 30 minutes. They were listening for two hours. No, I... Now, what Charlemagne said there is objectively true, and it's common sense. Of course, in any election, most Americans are going to care about the bread and butter issues that actually affect their lives. Obviously, Kamala Harris does not seem to understand that which is why her entire campaign is based on I really don't even know like abortion and diversity and dancing or something like honestly nobody knows right uh, but it's very interesting because Charlemagne at the end of the day we know still very anti-Trump still gonna vote for Kamala Harris already endorsed her but understanding the reasons why people vote for Trump. And it's kind of weird because does that mean Charlemagne, you, you're the voter who doesn't care about those things, right? Are you the voter who cares about that other stuff? Because clearly you are understanding here, look, all the issues that are affecting people's lives, Trump is winning on, Trump is the one talking about, but you don't want to vote for him. So what motivates Charlemagne's voting record? Well, who knows? We'll have to find out. There was one thing Trump said, it was something to the effect of, it's not global warming that's going to take us out. It's nuclear warming. And then Trump started having a convo about how all these countries have nuclear weapons and the threat of nuclear war is high. At that, Elon was so confused at that when he was doing that. But what then, is there to be confused about? Because he didn't start off the conversation talking about that. Trump took it there. Oh, yeah, they so, were talking about global warming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah he yeah, wasn't yeah, yeah. confused. Like, he didn't understand it. It was just like, that's not where... But Trump, he was controlling the conversation. But what Trump said, he said, global warming isn't going to take us out. Nuclear warming will. The fact that these conversations about nuclear war have been happening so frequently and so casually should scare Sorry, us all. Mm. 100% true, by the way. So, so far, Charlemagne has already made the case for Trump 2024. Fix the economy, make things affordable for regular Americans again, seal the border, make your regular life easier, and of course, stop nuclear war, stop the annihilation of human civilization. Seems like a pretty good case to me. Meanwhile, the administration currently in power has oversaw all of these things, and they are the ones, of course, moving us closer to nuclear war, not away. So what's the case against Trump then, Charlemagne? I mean, I'd like to hear it because it sounds like right now you're making all the arguments in our favor. Certainly concerning. Uh, meanwhile, on the other side of the aisle, Democratic Vice President 
Vice presidential candidate, uh, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, he's scheduled to visit Newport Beach, California today. Will O'Neill, who is the Republican mayor of Newport Beach, says Walls is welcome in his town, but there is a stark difference between Newport Beach and Minnesota. He's uh, Walls is also set to travel to uh, Denver, Colorado on Wednesday, and he is heading back to the East Coast on Thursdays. Those details uh, are pending. And in uh, Team USA News... And yet still amongst all of that, neither Tim Walls nor Kamala Harris can do a single interview with anyone. Okay, so Donald Trump just did a two hour interview with Elon Musk or conversation, they called it whatever. It was live. It was unscripted. It was unfiltered, uncensored. Kamala Harris is unable to do that. Neither is the VP. Of course, people should be asking the question why. Right. And I think the real reason is she's scared to speak candidly and honestly with the American people because she knows the moment that a journalist asks her, hey, wait, in 2020, you said blah, blah. Oh, no, no. Campaign over. No, I'm too radical. I'm going to hide my record. But nonetheless, OK, listen into later in this segment as Charlemagne once again brings up the question of foreign policy, nuclear war and how he's actually fearful that the world is moving closer to it. And he's glad that Donald Trump talks about it. Very interesting. So this comes as Iran has threatened to retaliate against Israel following the recent assassinations of Hamas and Hezbollah leaders. The U.S. has sent more military resources to the region and is monitoring rising tensions in the Middle East. Did you want to say something, Sharp? Yeah, I was just saying, you know, when I was listening to Trump, uh, you know, talk to Elon Musk yesterday, he was bringing this up. And, you know, I'm telling you, when you listen to Trump speak to the fact you know, countries like Iran, you know, think America is weak and Iran isn't scared to go into Israel because they have no fear of America. It does make you wonder if uh, if if that if that's true, you know, yeah. and then, you know, even listening to Trump yesterday talk about how he wants to build an iron dome over America. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like how Israel has an iron dome. Those conversations were never happening in America before. The fact Trump thinks we need an iron dome should concern us all. The fact that they're having these casual conversations about nuclear war should concern us all. And and for people, it should concern us all. And guess what? All this stuff is happening under the foreign policy leadership of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. But it is just kind of funny how, you know, all these figures who for years never gave Trump any credit, they're the biggest anti-Trumpers, suddenly piece by piece, whether it's Bill Maher, whether it's Charlemagne, whether it's Anna Kasparian, Cenk Uyghur, even sometimes whoever, they'll start off by saying Trump is bad, he's wrong about everything, but then it's like, no, Trump is right about some things, but still democracy, he's bad. And then, you know, come November, I doubt any of these people are going to be voting for Trump because, again, they still have the derangement syndrome. Charlemagne, for reasons he couldn't even articulate, he doesn't even know what Kamala Harris is running on, but he already endorsed Kamala from the get-go just because... You can speculate the reasons why. So I obviously don't want to give him too much credit because if he believes these things, but he's still so anti-Trump, maybe he has a case of cognitive dissonance going on. But still, regardless, I will point out in this video, I think it is just funny to hear Charlemagne kind of have to admit, hey, maybe Trump is right about some things. Hey, maybe uh, there are reasons why people vote for Trump. And this nuclear war thing, it's very real. And uh, maybe, you know, we need Trump foreign policy back. Just so, so funny. That said, folks, let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section down below. What do you think's going on with Charlemagne in this segment? Why did he suddenly like defend Trump so much? Who knows? Leave a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Follow me on X and social media. Link in the description. And until next time, God bless and peace.